Mars is a planet that is inhospitable and not easy to live on. This is due to multiple factors. However, we have decided to tackle one specific problem, energy production. While solar panels are an easy source of energy, they are hindered by Martian dust storms, which lower sunlight levels and cover the panels in dust. However, while storms limit solar energy, they increase another kind of energy, wind power. And what machine harvests this energy? Wind turbines. Wind turbines are a powerful tool that can be used to generate energy from wind, which is a renewable re- Wait, Wh what is this thing? This isn't your usual turbine. Instead of a horizontal axis of rotation, it has a vertical axis. This is called a vertical axis wind turbine, or VAUT. This is the kind of turbine that we have made to use on Mars. Here is the final prototype that we built. Before we get into the specifics of this thing, it's important to go over the design process we used. While many groups were trying to optimize certain aspects of their turbines, we looked into the applicability, asking questions about what kind of turbine would be good for the given situation. We found this important because even if a turbine performs well in testing, whether or not it performs well in the field is what really matters. To start out, we started researching different types of turbines, which is when we discovered the vertical axis turbines. This design interested us because of its omnidirectional capabilities, which essentially means that the turbine spins no matter what way the wind is blowing. They also tend to be smaller than traditional turbines, meaning that they could be packed together more closely to harvest more wind. From there, we nailed down our design specifics, such as what blades to use, how to build a base and stem, and figured out how to actually measure the power output via the motor shaft. After this step, we built the turbine, adjusting a few things as we went along. But enough about our process. Let's look at the finished product. As stated previously, this is a vertical axis turbine. We based it off the Savonius design, which generates torque by using drag-type blades, or scoops. While the classic Savonius design typically has the blades connected at the shaft, ours were spaced out so that we could construct the blades as separate units. The blades themselves are just strips of paper which have been folded over with hot glue in between, which helps them maintain their form. A metal brace was used to ensure that each blade was similar in shape for consistency. A 1 inch diameter dowel holds the turbine mechanism 10 inches from the brick base, where it rests in a small crater. Originally, we had tried to chisel a hole in the brick using advanced strategies, but the most we got was a small depression. On this brick is where most of the electronics are housed. A microcontroller manages all the wiring logic. On the LCD screen, we can output the generated power in microwatts, used to gather performance data. A green LED turns on to indicate when the turbine is producing power. Essentially, it's just detecting when the power output is not zero microwatts. Looking back up, there's also an LED and a photoresistor. These were implemented as a way to measure the rotation speed of the turbine, where the photoresistor can tell when a blade blocks light in its rotation. Unfortunately, this feature has succumbed, as the sampling rate of the microcontroller is not frequent enough to catch every blade passing by. The paper extensions on the blades were an attempt to remedy this issue by blocking the light for slightly longer, but it was not enough. Looking at our testing data, we tested the generated power at different distances from a box fan, along with displacing the turbine perpendicularly to redistribute the airflow. The power decreases as the fan distance increases, as expected. The 3 inch displacement generally has the highest wattage, which is probably because most of the air only hits the concave part of the turbine blades. Additionally, we tested different shaft materials, using both the bare shaft and the cork to connect to the motor. The bare shaft performed better as the taller exits of rotation with the cork was prone to leaning one way. The error in our data is likely due to the high fluctuations in our LCD readout, which could be remedied by averaging all the recorded values instead. Financially, how did the price of the turbine pan out? Well, we spent a total of 61 Martian dollars out of our 300 Martian dollar budget. To break it down, the 1 inch dowel was 30, the brick was 15, the two wire bundles we used was $5 each for a total of 10, and the 3D print we had had a base cost of 5 along with an extra 1 Martian dollar for the volume. That's only about 20% of our total budget used. That's pretty efficient. Getting to this end product was not all smooth sailing. 
In fact, the design we planned to use for much of the time spent on this was actually quite different. Instead of the drag type blades we have today, originally we're going to create something similar to the Gorlov design. Instead of relying on drag, the blades use airfoils to create torque. We actually finished designing and building a version of the Gorlov turbine, but were heavily disappointed to discover that it was not efficient enough to keep rotating with the given test fan's wind power. There are multiple theories as to why this iteration failed, but the main one is that the airfoils may not have been exaggerated enough for the scale we were working on. Since these blades were built on a 3D printer, the printing resolution may have contributed to the iteration's demise, as the actual shape of the blades may not have been precise enough. After the failure of the Gorlov turbine, we decided to create a Savonius type turbine. This iteration has blades in the shape of scoops, which we correctly predicted would work better. A 3D printed frame that holds the blades were actually inherited from the Gorlav turbine after it was scrapped, which is the main reason we chose to use three blades instead of the usual two or four. After some testing, the Savonius turbine proved to be able to spin on its own with the wind source provided. For future iterations, we predict that the horizontal axis turbine may be more efficient than the vertical axis wind turbine. This is because horizontal axis turbines are overall more efficient with converting energy from wind to mechanical. The main reasons why we chose the vertical axis were omnidirectional and takes up less space, so more can be built on the Martian terrain. The horizontal axis wind turbine takes up more space, but it's overall more efficient in converting energy. Additionally, the problem facing the wind could be resolved via a wind vane, which is a rudder that automatically faces the turbine towards wind. Time to put it into retirement.